Okay, so now that we know what keeps uh, elements together, uh, one thing I like to talk about at this point is where do elements come from? So we've got our big board of elements. All right, how are they produced? All right. Natural. They're all naturally occurring. So the naturally occurring isotopes, of course, well, I'll talk about unnatural um, isotopes, synthetic isotopes. But essentially, there's four processes that produce elements in nature. Okay. There's some other side ones that are a little bit more uh, complex, but these are the four big ones. Okay. So first process that produced elements was the first process, the Big Bang. What? The Big Bang, 14 billion years ago, plus or minus a couple hundred million. Okay. Uh, that's our universe came into existence, and it produced every single particle we have in the universe. And event, initially, there's still a lot of energy uh, produced from the Big Bang, so nobody played with each other. It was just photons and quarks and electrons at really high energy. And then it started to expand and started to cool down, and suddenly the quarks started coming together to make protons and neutrons. And then suddenly things were cooling down even more, and a proton went and hanged out with an electron. Guess what we had? No. Hydrogen. First element, hydrogen, after a little while. Okay? And then there's still a lot of energy, so some of those hydrogens banged into other hydrogens, made nuclear fusion reactions, and made helium, and even made a little bit of lithium. Okay? So the Big Bang, 14 billion years ago, made hydrogen, helium, and a little bit of lithium. But mostly hydrogen. All right? A lot of hydrogen. And for that reason, hydrogen is still the most abundant element in the universe by a lot, I think. Okay? So hydrogen, helium, and lithium. Obviously, this would be a pretty boring uh, universe and planet. Well, I don't even think we'd have a planet if that was it. So obviously, other things came along and produced other elements. And one of the... Um, the second thing that started producing elements is uh, picture it here. Okay? So eventually, all this hydrogen that's produced, primarily hydrogen, um, from the Big Bang, started to attract each other through gravity. So gravity started to take over, and hydrogen started to attract to each other. And all these big, huge clouds of hydrogen gas, that's what this is, these big, huge, monstrous Hydro, clouds of hydrogen gas, like can't even explain how big they are because it's the universe. The universe turns to be big, including Pluto. Pluto's in the universe. Um, started to collect together because of gravity. And because there's so much, gra uh, so much hydrogen in this glass, so much mass, it started to produce a lot of gravity once they started coming closer and closer and closer together. And eventually, all that mass and all that gravity started to push hydrogen atoms together in nuclear fusion reactions to make helium and other elements. And that is what a star is. A star is uh, usually starts out as big, or the initial stars were big, huge clouds of hydrogen that collected due to gravity, and the immense gravity of all that hydrogen pushes them together and makes stars. And this is called a nebula. So it's a region of star formation, just regions in the universe that have lots and lots of hydrogen gas, and they come together and they make stars. Okay? This is called the Eagle Nebula. This is a NASA image, it's not mine. I didn't take it. So that is the second process that is creating elements. It is stars. All right. Stars produce new elements through nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion. And they can make from helium all the way up to iron. So that's what our star is doing. Our sun, uh, it's making helium right now. And it turns out that's a pretty energetic process. We got a lot of energy from uh, star, our sun, lots of gravity pushing hydrogen atoms together at the core of the star 
uh, making helium and other isotopes. Okay. That's as far as our uh, star, our sun, can do. It's actually a pretty small star in terms of other stars. Uh, so it can only make up the helium. It can't make any other. It's not going to make past helium. All right? Some stars, bigger stars, can go all the way up to iron through usually like some like onion-like structure where they make carbon, then nitrogen, then oxygen, and it's their side uh, reactions, and then make iron in its core eventually, the older it gets. The older the star is, the, the, more, uh, the higher the element it can make. But past iron, uh, turns out the binding curve of iron, that's like the iron 56, that isotope is the most stable isotope. And so it takes the most energy to make that isotope. And it turns out that stars don't have enough energy to make past iron 56. Right. Uh, but of course, look at the big board. We've got elements past 56. So what happens next? Okay. We got to think about what happens to stars. All right. What happens to stars? Some stars, okay, like our star is a pretty small star. Uh, it's building helium in its nucleus, and that's causing it to expand. And eventually, it's just going to use up all of its hydrogen, stop doing nuclear reaction, and just continually expand. And then that's pretty much all it does. Okay? Um, so that's end game for our sun. All right? Which, by the way, we need to make plans. Okay? Before it runs out of fuel, we got a bigger problem. It's expanding right now. It's expanding from the helium in the, in the core, and so it's getting bigger year by year. So eventually, it will grow so big and heat up Earth so much that we won't have any liquid water on Earth. Yeah, so we're not going to have liquid water on a planet. That is going to happen in a couple hundred million years. All right, so, but we got to start making plans. We got to figure out where we're going to go. All right, we're going to pick a planet here. We're going to go to a different solar system. Like Decisions. We've got decisions to make. But anyway, so that's what happens to our sun, our star. It's just going to expand, use up all its fuel, then it's done ski. On the other side of the spectrum, really, really, really big stars have so much mass that eventually they collapse in on themselves just because of the vast amount of gravity, and they make what? Black hole, yeah, black hole. So that's what, you know, those are out there. So that happens to really, really big stars. They just collapse in on themselves and make black holes where the gravity is so intense, nothing escapes them, even light. Okay. Then in the middle, there's all these other kinds of stars and sizes and that do different things. A lot of them in the middle, they're bigger than our star, it's not as big as a black hole. Eventually, they're, uh, they have a lot of gravity, so they collapse in on themselves, but not so much gravity that it keeps it there and they actually explode. Okay, stars explode, and that's called a supernova. And it turns out that a star exploding is pretty energetic. Okay, when a star explodes, it produces a lot of energy. Okay. All right, so supernovas happen. A supernova is an exploding star. All right, and they make all the way up to uranium. Yeah, from helium all the way up to, I guess, helium all the way up to uranium. And so uh, there's also other uh, phenomenon that can create uh, elements uh, in addition to supernova. Like one just happened a couple uh, weeks ago, and we are actually pointing a telescope at it. Uh, and caught uh, a lot of information from it uh, called neutron stars, which are the remnants of when they collapse in on themselves. So neutron stars, two neutron stars collided somewhere out there. And apparently that's a lot of uh, energy too. And that produced uh, elements as well. So colliding neutron stars also um, produce elements. I'll just keep that here under supernovas though. All right. And uh, so that's where all of our elements we got here on Earth come from. So these stars, they blow up, they shoot off all these elements out into space, and then eventually what happens? Well, gravity starts to take over again. And gravity pulls in those elements, and they make new stars. Those are called, what are they called? Second, second generation stars, I think. Yeah, second generation stars. So our star is actually a second generation star. It was made from elements of another exploding star. And all the planets in our solar system are made from material created in supernovas. 
Okay, so every single one of the elements come from this process that we have. All right. So all of the atoms, and I think this is cool. This is like just the science geek of me coming out. Okay, like full-fledged science geek about to happen. Like every atom in your body is either from a star, an exploding star, or the Big Bang. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. But we're still not done. If you look at the big board, we've got elements past uranium, but that's all nature has produced for us. So guess what? We had to get to work. Okay? There are synthetic elements. And these are produced by humans, by us. Well, I mean, there's other ones, but I'll just put U2 dot dot dot. I don't know how long this. Who knows how we're gonna, how far we're gonna take.